DSLR Shooter. Brought to you by Adobe, Akidio, Adama, Black Magic Design, Carl Zeiss, Shutterstock, and That Studio. Hi, Clint with HDSLR Shooter here at the Banpro Open House 2014 here with Rich Schlooning of Zeiss. And uh, Rich, last time we talked, you guys had just announced the Loxia lenses. Uh, now Sony's announced another A7 in their uh, series, the A7 II. Talk a little bit about the Loxia and, and what that actually entailed. Yeah, so it's really exciting. We have, first, we have a very good relationship with Sony. So there's a, there's a, a, a nice you know, corporate communication. We're kind of aware of what they're doing a little bit ahead of time. So when it comes to developing lenses, we, we try to be a little bit ahead of the curve so that we're, we have lenses to match the cameras as they come out. And we're also really excited about the E-mount in, in particular and what Sony's doing with sensors. So we have uh, E-mount with APS-C APS sensors, E-mount with full-frame sensors. And we have the range of products that Sony's building around that mount system right now deserves uh, you know, a dedicated lens system. So you see uh, Zeiss branded lenses sold by Sony, uh, some zooms and primes, uh, 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, there's a 35 and a 55. Those are really you know, highly regarded autofocus lenses. But we wanted something to address the motion or the video side of using these cameras. The new FS7, particularly the A7S, and now the A7 II model with the image stabilization on the sensor. You know, we always realized that with the mirrorless camera, you can mount lots of stuff to that camera. Physically, it's easy. Uh, taking a lens that has a longer flange focal distance to one of these mirrorless cameras is a piece of cake. Mechanical mounting is one thing, but whether or not that lens is a good optical match to the sensor is a whole other issue. Now, we know that our, our ZM lenses, our M mount for Leica Rangefinder, is a, is a good match to that, that camera system because they're small, lightweight lenses. But those lenses were designed for film cameras. And in particular, the wides, the Biagon design, uh, 35 millimeter and wider, has a very steep ray angle out of the rear of the lens, which isn't really well suited for shooting on a digital sensor. So, so when you take an M mount, a 35, the 25, 28, the 21s, 18s and 15s, there's a lot of lenses we have in the wide angle range, and you mount that to like a, a, a full frame Sony, yes, the lens covers the image circle, not an issue, but optically it's not a good match in terms of color shading in the corners. Uh, you'll see a, a shift towards magenta, and uh, the corners get dark, but you also see this smearing effect because you're not striking, the, exposing the pixels perpendicular, you're, you're exposing them on an angle. So you get this, uh, it's almost like someone is uh, taking the image and softened it at the edges, and there's no way to correct for it. So yeah, I can mount an M-mount lens to the camera, and it's small, it's light, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a good match from that standpoint, but the results are terrible. Optical results are terrible. So we, what we wanted to do is to take, um, to kind of take that small, lightweight design and purpose build it for the A7 platform. In particular, this sensor, and also for the low pass filter that sits in front of that sensor. Because it's, uh, it's a pretty thick you know, glass plate that has optical characteristics, and our designers have to take that into account when they design a lens. So what we did is we took our, our 35 F2 and our 50 F2, um, and we've basically built them for that camera and sensor. So what we have here is, uh, a very small, lightweight, all metal construction. It has a nice heft to it. And these are full frame E mounts. So they communicate directly with the Sony body, either the full frame or the APS C body. There's a uh, weather seal gasket, which makes uh, not only uh, a, a good choice for keeping dust and moisture out, but it's also good because it provides a nice snug fit against the body. So that as I'm changing focus, I'm not shifting the lens on the mount. So it's good from that standpoint also. Um, as I mentioned, it's manual focus with hard stop, so it's not a fly-by-wire autofocus lens that you're manually focusing. It means you've got good focus control, and you know where your infinity and hard and close focus is, because you have a hard stop on both ends. The aperture, which is a first for an E-mount, is that the aperture is on a lens, not electronically through the body. So I've got an aperture that has one-third stop clicks, or I've got a recessed uh, screw map back here. Basically, turn in, I've got a continuous iris. I know for me the micro four thirds lenses that are out there that I've used that are using electronics for the aperture, it's, it's painful to deal with, you know. Uh, it seemed to me kind of an unusual move to uh, make it manual because you just don't see it anymore. Even though a manual way is such a pleasure to shoot with, 
Was that a tough decision for you guys to come to? No, because you know the the the, the target customer for this, we have two. So you think of a rangefinder shooter who wants to use a mirrorless camera and wants a digital equivalent or a digital alternative to a high-end, expensive digital rangefinder camera. Um, the thing is, is that these autofocus lenses for those cameras make it very difficult to do street shooting because there's no focus scales, there's no focus marks on the barrel. So presetting focus, doing zone focusing, and going out and doing you know traditional street shooting, where, I, where everything's preset. I'm stopped down, I know what my depth of field is because I have marks on the lens, so I know what range I'm shooting in, and basically go out and, and react and respond to what's happening in front of you without having to pick the camera up and fiddle with the focus. So from that standpoint, the lens was designed for traditional street photographers. So having a manual focus, manual aperture was a no-brainer from that application. And then we also, you know, when we saw the, uh, the development of e-mount for video applications, we knew that having manual focus control, of course, is a big pop, big boon. Having hard stops, again, it's that's a natural. But also having the ability to pull iris as you're filming and not have to do it through the camera was just another logical progression. And for us, the, the, the key thing here was to be able to de-click it right on the lens to give you that continuous iris when you want to. And that's something the user can do with a de-click tool, small screwdriver on the back of the lens, half turn, and you know, you're good to go. So we started shipping the, the 50F2 since we last spoke, the next video show. And the 35F2 is starting to ship this week. In fact, I think today, as a matter of fact. Since we spoke, uh, the reaction to the lenses, the reviews that have appeared online, uh, have gone kind of hand in hand with the increased visibility that Sony's getting with the A7S and now the A7 II. So, you know, we're kind of in that early stage of the camera, I think, getting traction in the marketplace. I think with the A7S shipping, the new 4K recorder, the Shogun, I think it's, uh, it's really going to transform that camera into a, a nice small 4K uh, alternative. You know, we wanted to make sure that we had a, um, a lens solution that made sense for the guys that are shooting run and gun. Um, you know, again, small, lightweight, affordable type of glass. So in addition to being able to take our ZE series with the Metabones adapter and mounting it to the camera, uh, we now envision a, a small family of small, lightweight lenses you know, purpose-built for the camera. But even though it's manual, it still, it still talks to the camera and there's metadata about uh, exposure settings and things like that going to the camera, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we do fully communicate with, uh, with the Sony body. So, you know, the only thing you don't have, you know, because you have an aperture on a lens, you don't have uh, a shutter priority, right? Because you're not, you don't have the ability to set the, uh, the camera doesn't have the ability to set the aperture. All right, so you're shooting, um, you're going to shoot aperture priority, you're going to shoot manual, basically. But for the pro, you want that, though. Yeah, exactly. You know, you don't want, you, you know, since image quality is often aperture dependent, maybe with the exception of the Otis lens series. Most lenses benefit from uh, stopping down. You don't want the camera deciding what your image quality is like or your depth of field. So, you, you know, you want to set the aperture and then control, you know, set your shutter speed based on your lighting conditions or set the ISO to balance it out. So, yeah, you want, you want to definitely take control of uh, your aperture, without a doubt. So they're shipping now and uh, new ones coming. What's the next lens in the series? So we're looking next year. You know, we're going to do wides and we'll do long. So there'll be a small family of, of lenses. Uh, timing, we're not announcing yet. You know, I would say, you know, when we talk this time next year, we'll probably have something else to talk about. Um, but, you know, I, I, maybe one thing to leave with is that, again, since the last time we spoke, the re response to the lenses has been very positive. So there's, uh, there's demand out there, and I think the, the market is recognizing, uh, you know, what these new cameras are capable of doing. People want to find out more about all the Zeiss products. What do they do? Uh, best place is the Zeiss website, so it's uh, zeiss.com forward slash cine. Thanks so much, Rich. Thank you. HDSLR Shooter, brought to you by Adobe, Akidio, Adama, Black Magic Design, Carl Zeiss, Shutterstock, and That Studio.